So, um, on behalf of Christopher Dutz, who, who um, organized the IIT track, I'm very happy to introduce you to uh, Timothy and David, who will talk about edge processing in Apache Knife, if I remember correctly. Timothy, stay That's good. Here. Thanks a lot. Uh, hopefully, everything will be working. Uh, I've set up uh, a number of demos here, and uh, there's a lot of uh, spinning plates at the same time. So I'll have to see, make sure I have uh, nothing blowing up. Uh, potentially, uh, it doesn't look like David could sign in to, uh, to speak, but he is there in the chat. And if you have any Pulsar questions, he not only wrote the, uh, wrote the book, he is the man. So he should be pretty good uh, to go there. So uh, we should be good to go. Okay. So today my talk is uh, Cracking the Nut, uh, which is uh, my funny way of doing uh, the IoT talk. So we're talking about uh, different ways you can uh, run Edge AI with... Uh, pretty simple means here. I'm just checking, making sure uh, what I expect to be running is running. I believe it is. Hopefully it is. If it's not, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we, we will see. Uh, let's see. Hold on here. I'm restarting something. Okay. Now, if if you haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, gone to my previous talks, uh, you missed them. <laughs> they, they will be recorded. I did post the slides, especially if you're interested in NiFi, deep learning. But there's Pulsar and Flink there as well. Did Smart Transit a little earlier today. There were some really good talks today on Pulsar by Matteo. He's doing one right now. So if you're more interested in Pulsar, go there. This will be recorded. You can watch it at a later time. I don't know how long later, but we'll see. Uh, tomorrow, I got one last uh, talk on NiFi. If you have questions left over from today or yesterday, see me then. Otherwise, connect through GitHub, LinkedIn, wherever. David, who is uh, down the bottom, I don't think he was able to join... Uh, be a sound, but he is there in chat. Uh, his uh, stats are here, and if you want to connect, he's got uh, a really awesome NiFi Pulsar connector that I'm uh, show you today. He's also written the book, and you can get that very easily by going to uh, streamnative.com, and we've got uh, ways to do that. Uh, I highly recommend you get this book. Uh, I'm waiting for the print copy as well. It's nice to have the PDF, but having that book sit in front of you so that, uh, you know, you know everything going on, it's really helpful. This is me. I used to be somewhere else. I uh, focus on Apache Pulsar and Flink SQL, but uh, also some, uh, you know, doing a couple other things with some other related frameworks. Uh that's it. Uh, I work at Stream Native. Uh, we have a very cool hosted uh, Pulsar and Flink SQL. I'll show you a little bit of that just to get an idea. In case you don't want to run this all on your own, it's very powerful to run this, uh, you know, through Docker or Kubernetes if you want, or just the standalone, which I'm running for some demos. But having a fully managed environment with all the uh, management there for you, not have to worry about setting up Bookkeeper or Pulsar or uh, how you're gonna host your functions or how to set up that tier storage. Makes that a lot easier. Today, the uh, pieces I'm using are using the uh, flip stack is what I call the combination of Flink, Pulsar, that connector between them and NiFi. Sometimes I call it flipping. It really depends. Uh, depends on what's going on there. And uh, 
Hold on a second. I've got a network glitch here. I'll be right back. What's going on? I emailed them. Come on in. Sorry about that. Network glitchy here. So flip stack. Who's the flip stack good for if you do an edge AI? Cloud data engineers. If you know a little Python, you know a little uh, Java, you're in good shape. SQL will help too. Now I'm using a lot of open source cloud native frameworks. Uh, specifically Apache NiFi, Apache Pulsar, Apache Flink, as well as sometimes I'm using Trino, which is a really nice way to uh, interface with Pulsar. And we're doing uh, using the MQTT on Pulsar Connector. Sometimes I use the Kafka on Pulsar Connector as well. You know, but there's a couple of options there. Um, what else we have here now for deep learning, you know, we're often doing the, uh, uh, deep learning with DJL and that is, uh, a framework for doing MXNet as well as PyTorch, TensorFlow through Java. And it's very easy to compile this. So I'm using that within NiFi and that can be deployed to the edge or I could run that as part of the stream. Again, where the edge starts can be right on a device, can be on a smart camera, phone, truck, train, car, wherever. It could be a gateway that's one step out of those devices, which is usually a smarter way because you might have hundreds of devices. They might be really tiny. They're not all as big as my Jetson Xavier's over here or Jetson Nano's. So you might need them to be on a gateway it could be a little edge server that could be running Linux or Kubernetes or, you know, something else or, uh, you know, custom gateway, or it could be a server in your remote office or at the edge. You could run some NiFi there. You can run Pulsar there. You know, it really depends on where you want to do that functionality. Now, the reason why I, I suggest Apache Pulsar Obviously, there's a lot of other great Apache projects out there, but it's nice when you're doing MQTT and edge processing to have one messaging platform. Because before, you might, you're definitely going to have MQTT somewhere. You may have JMS somewhere. You may have Kafka somewhere. Can you, like a whole bunch of different messaging. Where did I send that message? Do all the clients able to get it? If I put everything in Pulsar, I could use JMS, I could use MQTT, I could use Kafka, I could use native Pulsar. And it lets me do not just those different protocols and connections and clients, but I could do it different styles. Like message queuing and data streaming are not the same. If you've done Kafka, that is a different style than a message queue where you might want 20 clients to process one stream of messages and they're all independent, they're idempotent, they're working on separate events. Whereas Kafka and data streaming style, you know, you're dealing with a continuous stream of data. Maybe you are doing exactly one semantics from the source and the sync. 
and then you know you want one consumer or one consumer group to get it and you're not uh you don't want random people processing it pulsar supports both which is very important for some use cases i put a couple of diagrams from david's excellent book he's got a a nice section on IoT, which I highly recommend. Again, that book is available now. And why I like this diagram is it shows you, like I mentioned, having that IoT gateway, using it so you get that data in from different sensors. Maybe there's Pulsar functions there doing some machine learning, things like anomaly detection, what have you. And then when I push it to another topic, uh, the power of Pulsar is I may not need anything else to get that to my cloud or get that to my cluster because Pulsar has geo-replication, can replicate it to all these different uh, clusters and uh, regions throughout the world, whether they're all in Amazon or Azure or on your own hardware somewhere or combination replicates it out there. You don't need any special gateways after that. You don't need any special equipment. That is a nice way to do it. Again, we have a lot of options here. You can keep it all Pulsar and not touch anything else. Makes it pretty easy. And then uh, other option is, you know, you have different gateways, push stuff together, consolidate it. Maybe you're sharing data between them. Lots of different aggregations you could do. You know, whether you have edge servers sitting right there in one place or in a region, or in a cloud to handle maybe some more complex processing. Maybe that's where Flink ties in, or you might have that to uh, in the same office, just so you could replicate the data between different sections. I've seen some of these warehouses; these, they're massive. You know, going from one end to the other, you know, could be a significant effort. So that's something to uh, think about. Uh, this is one of my NIFI diagrams. I'm going to go into uh, details on what we're doing and some of the different options for uh, sending around data. Again, what's nice here is sometimes I use NIFI with Pulsar. Sometimes I use Pulsar by itself. Sometimes it's Pulsar and Flink together. Sometimes it's NIFI, Pulsar, and Flink. Depends on your use case, what kind of processing you need to do you know, where the data is coming from, where it's going to, what's that final set of processing you have to do. What's nice is you can move workloads around depending on, you know, how fast you need it. Where do you have the compute abilities? You know, do I have compute all sitting in the public cloud, different public clouds in a private cloud and an edge server? You just move it around. It makes it very simple. What's nice having one uh, one common place for uh, your messages are that you can easily replicate this around, have different consumers, different people producing it, using different protocols. You know, you're not stuck in one location or one style of doing it. Now, very common, once I've gotten uh, my data in a format that makes sense and is easy to work with, I will, uh, you know, have it in something like JSON. JSON is very easy to read. It's about as human readable as you can get in a data format. It is almost universally processable, whether I'm using Python or I'm using uh, Java, Scala, Spark, Flink, you know, wherever I am. Pretty easy to work with JSON, especially I'm going to load this into, say, a Jupyter Notebook. So I have that in a format that's pretty clean, whether it's coming from different uh, edge sensors or wherever. I've got a lot of different sensors sitting on my desk adjacent to me because I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 running with some sensors. I've got a uh, couple of Jets and Nanos. I've got a Xavier box. Uh, you know, a couple different set of sensors there, but these are some common ones. These are really good for uh, demos and use case examples, you know, getting temperature, pressure, humidity, light. All these are pretty useful sensors, you know. Uh, I've got a new one recently. I really like this sensor. 
pops on top of a Jetson Nano, has a little screen that you could send uh, information to, see what the sensor readings are, maybe put the IP address in there. That's better when we get back to doing uh, this conference in person. You know, you could take a look at the device running right there. Makes it really nice. Obviously, I could hook up cameras and do some other uh, work there. So some of the examples are uh, Jetson devices with sensors. Or we're doing the Edge AI there. Very easy to interface with Pulsar. We've got example code doing Go, doing Python, doing some Java. All that runs very well on these Edge devices, especially on the Jetson Got a very powerful set of uh, CPU and uh, GPUs there. And I can show you those when we uh, get onto that box there. I'll show you how that works. Oop, not to get too far. We're going to do a demo walkthrough. And then I'll uh, show you some additional uh, slides. You can go deeper. But uh, let's, let's start off with a demo. We'll start with everyone's favorite place to be. And that is the command line. Uh, I'm joking, but uh, for certain use cases, this is uh, a good way to do it. Now I'm sending some of this IoT data up to my uh, cloud. Uh, this is my cloud hosted through Stream Native, and it's got all kinds of security and makes it nice for doing that. This is uh, a Go program I wrote. I am not a Golang developer. So I used uh, some examples that uh, Stream Native put out there, which are very nice. And just put in a little bit of my own. I'm using the uh, tail to go through a log. A sensor is populating that log. And we'll just iterate through the log with Go, grab those values, and send them out to uh, my cloud here. Let me show you quickly what that looks like. This is uh, where I have Pulsar hosted in the cloud. This is my uh, brokers. You can see the throughput coming through. A couple different subscriptions there. Uh, we have a schema here for that data. Let me show you what that looks like. Get an idea. There's a camera, CPU, GPU, you know, all the different uh, things on that device. Some of them related to that Edge AI. And let's take a look at the messages. This makes it really easy for you to... Uh, Make sure I'm getting the data. You know, it's easy to send it. I didn't see an error. I think everything's happy. It's good to take a look. Okay, where that came from, the different message. Does that look right? Yes. You know, and I could look back based on timestamp and other data, make sure I'm getting the data that I expect to get. You know, depends how much you want to see at once. Maybe 200 is too much. You don't really want to see that all on one screen. And then when I'm happy with the data, I could use Flink SQL. Again, I've got a hosted edition here in preview in the, the Stream Native Cloud. I've gone to my instance where I have a Flink cluster running. And I navigate through the catalogs that are built for me. You saw I had that schema out there. So I have one for this IoT Jetson uh, JSON which I, I'm very good at coming up with names. And you can see all the data here. Looks as if I just did a query. I mean, it's pretty easy. Now, if I wanted to join this with another source, wanted to send the results somewhere, lots of different uh, things you could do. Yeah, th this type of architecture here, if we take a look at this example, schema registry is built into Pulsar. Some very useful use cases are we're doing uh, predictive maintenance. You know, I have a truck, I've got a train, I've got equipment. I want to check if it's getting too hot over time, if it's outside of the uh, boundaries of what's acceptable values. You know, do things need to be tweaked, restarted? Uh, images can be looking to see, is there some kind of damage in the facility? Is something missing? Can I count inventory? Lots of different things you could do at the edge. What's nice here is slim code, not tied to any particular protocol, so I can easily switch things out. You tell me I've got a fixed device, only does MQTT. I can have that connect to my Pulsar cluster. 
whether that's in an edge gateway or it's up in some cloud somewhere, makes it pretty straightforward. Again, having that ability to query that data through uh, Flink SQL makes things pretty easy. Got a decent amount of data here. I'm on the uh, 43rd page here, and this one just came in. That's uh, my current, uh, another one just came in. As we're sending data from our happy, uh, happy little command line here through Go, and I've got uh, the actual program running here. It's got a lot of debug information that most people aren't seeing. This is usually running headless, but uh, I like to have that on so I can make sure what's going on. This is taking a picture straight at my head. It's not doing a good job of analytics there, or I don't have a normal looking head. Both are possible, or I need to change to a different model. And then you can see here it's producing JSON, sending it into, uh, into my cluster here, and it's available. I'm sending it actually to two different clusters. I've got one here hosted in stream native, and I've got another running as a gateway on my laptop, just so I have, uh, you know, different ways to do it. As you see here, those were the new records coming in. As we get another record in the tail, my Go program is just sending it out. Pretty straightforward, but uh, this shows you some different things we could do. Now, I also have a, another NVIDIA box here. This one is running a different, uh, if we look here, this is that one I showed you with that cool sensor with the reading there. That is running. I don't have too much debug stuff on here, but that's publishing to a log. This program is doing the same idea, reading from that log and sending it out. This one sending it to the uh, local one. And this is just a local, uh, another Go program. This is sending it to uh, an NVIDIA sensor. I got lazy and hard-coded stuff. You know, these should be all parameters, you know. Uh, for this example, that's fine. So that's sending it to the NVIDIA Jetson. Now, what's interesting with that is I have on my local cluster, I have a, let me show you. Let's, let's consume this. Make sure it's actually arriving here in the local server. That's where it's going on the local server. We'll make sure we have data there. And then up here is I have a Pulsar sync that's taking uh, those topics and sending them to uh, a Postgres SQL database that I have up here. And that is getting, you know, the recent data. And I could take a look here when this came through. This is system date of... Uh, this minute. So this just one came in and that's in a cloud hosted Postgres SQL. I could have pushed that to whatever your database is. Someone in the last talk mentioned Snowflake. Someone mentioned Aerospike. I could send it to ClickHouse. I could send it to, uh, you know, any kind of data lake, data warehouse that you might have. Pretty straightforward. Lots of different uh, Pulsar syncs. So you don't even have to write any code. You know, I just have this very simple connector here, which I can easily monitor how many records are coming through and what's going on. Makes it very easy. Another three records as we're reading every few seconds to a minute, depending on uh, the sensor. Just an easy way to do that. So if you find this type of application interesting, I have put all the source code out here. And it's soup to nuts, what you need to do. I've got uh, one of them in this flip SQL, which I'll put that. Remember, all the slides, all the source code will be posted through uh, various channels. And I'll make sure it's in the official ApacheCon uh, uh, links so you can get to it. Lots of notes here, how you set things up, how you build your own tenants and namespaces and topics. How you example, if you want to test the consuming data. You know, how do you build tables for Pulsar and Flink SQL? Bunch of different example ones here. How to uh, set up that uh, JDBC sync. It's really easy. You do need a schema for it. So I recommend you write uh, a first-class application for that. I've written one in Java. 
that has its own schema. So I define all the fields in there. And then we could just start, stop, all those sort of things. We could do that through the stream native uh, GUI is a little easier, but it's nice to have all these things that can be processed through uh, DevOps. Yes, it's unfortunately for everyone in the world, stream native is not just for me. If it was, that'd be pretty awesome, but this is available for everyone. And I think there's, uh, if you do some contacts through stream native, you can get uh, some tr a trial license and there's uh, you know free and low cost additions. So if you don't want to uh, spend a lot of money, you don't have to. Lots of different features you could choose from, you know, depend on what cloud you want to run it on. You know, do you want to have MQTT? Do you want to have uh, the others? You know, what kind of support do you want? Got a lot of options there. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, my first day, I, I got a free trial. <laughs> you know, press one button, create a cluster. You know, go over here, create a tenant. You know, all these things are uh, pretty straightforward. You know, and setting up securities there. What's nice is if you want uh, access, you go to the client. It gives you example code for pretty much everything you want. Uh, can't get much uh, harder than that. Very simple. If you need syncs, there's a bunch here. You could check out the Stream Native Hub for more syncs. I've played around with a bunch of them already. Very nice. Uh, I like the, uh, the you just saw the JDBC one with Postgres. Uh, these guys are enabled for uh, protocols. Makes it really easy. JDBC sync, very nice. Uh, I've done it with the solar one, which is another nice one. There's a ton of them. If you don't see the one you want, it might be out there in the open source. Or you might want to create your own. You know, that's the, the uh, beauty of open source. You know, create your own, create more. You know, pretty straightforward here to create these. You know, depends what you're doing. Having these namespaces mean maybe I just set up one cloud and have different uh, groups within my company using it. You know, depends on your use case. You know, topics might be enough to separate things for you. Maybe they're not. You know, depends what you're doing. You know, lots of options there. So, yeah, let's see how many records went through now. Again, I could put this in uh, my DevOps system to monitor this or make the call through REST. Lots of options there. So this is fully documented. All the source code is there. Step-by-step uh, -step instructions. I'll wrap this in an article. We got the SQL. I've got schemas. I've got configuration files. So if you want to set this up on your own, you can do that really easy to do. Got another one here for IoT. This has got that Go source code. This has got the Python source code. This tell, shows you all the setup, how you do the builds. Got another one here for just specific to Jetson and the things I'm doing with Jetson. I did this in the uh, solar conference. This is a, a really nice, easy way to take data from a Jetson, whether it's AJI results or sensor values, and stream that uh, real time into uh, solar. Pretty cool way to do that. We've got the full source code there for that. And then finally, I've got uh, one AJI, a little different here. This has got the, all the links you could think of, setting things up. And these are the specific things I'm using in the demo with, you know, example consuming data, some example of the output, you know, how do you do a cleanup? How do you build a table here in Flink for this? Uh, if you want to run Flink locally, you could download the pre-compiled version for your platform and just start the cluster, run the SQL client, build this table, send data to it, and you're live. You're doing your live uh, SQL there. Doesn't get much easier than that. Now, besides these examples, I do have, uh, I am doing this with uh, some code with NiFi. Hopefully my stuff didn't time out while we've been uh, chatting here. Uh, it might have timed out. I might have to reload uh, the web interface, but that's fine. Do have any of these loaded? We'll go back here. Okay, this, let's go here. Sometimes uh, 
NiFi doesn't want to let you be logged in too long now that it's added uh, security features, which is a legitimate thing. So on that NVIDIA device, every time I'm doing that, uh, that capture right there, it's grabbing that image with SFTP. It makes sure I don't grab duplicates. You know, it keeps a uh, log there. When I get a success here, loading those images, I have a deep learning processor I wrote in iFi. Remember we said, maybe I do deep learning on that device. Maybe I wait till it gets somewhere else. Maybe I do it in a Pulsar function. Maybe I do it in Flink. Lots of options there. Yeah, I don't have my model server running. But here I've gotten the results here of loading that image in and doing some uh, analytics on it. It took a look at me. What did it think I was? Person. Huh. Well, that's pretty good. Again, got a side shot here from, you know, the camera there while we're uh, going live. Just show you we can grab images. We grab whatever we're interested in. We could grab records from Pulsar thanks to uh, David's processor there, which is in the middle of an update. So if you have any requests there, features you might need, uh, test cases, please go to the uh, GitHub that we linked before so you can uh, do that. This one's grabbing from uh, a Pulsar topic that I'm feeding through MQTT. We're getting the data here. I'm running a query on it you know, checking to see what the humidity level is. Sometimes it's a little higher in this office than it should be. And uh, we could see those results that we've uh, grabbed in JSON. And it's a mixture of uh, sensors in there. And then when we're done, uh, we can push it to Postgres. Now you saw the, uh, the code we have there to automatically push it in with Pulsar. That may be more interesting to you. That may be a little simpler to do that versus uh, having to write some NiFi code. David posted his uh, NiFi bundle there. You just got to install a knife, a NAR file in uh, the NiFi lib directory, restart your server, and then it'll show up in NiFi. You get a whole bunch of different uh, Pulsar ones here. You know, whether you're consuming with a record or without a record. Really depends on what that format is. If it's JSON, I'm probably going to use the record. And if I want to send data to Pulsar, again, it makes it easy for sending data if you're already in NiFi. Like here, I'm doing the weather. You know, again, looks familiar. I have a connection pool for Pulsar that I'm using at the uh, top of my uh, code and using it in a bunch of different classes. And this is just going to weather. We take a look. What's nice here is for this one is my local one. You know, you could set up whatever authentication you need there and different settings. And that'll just run. Uh, I push through tens of thousands of messages a second on my laptop, which is running NiFi in a Pulsar standalone cluster. Plus you know, this presentation, plus uh, Chrome and some other things. Very powerful. Uh, if you were here for the last talk, you saw us grabbing that uh, transit data. That is another example of data we could push through the system. Again, you may want to uh, combine some of that edge data with some data you capture from REST. This is where the whole thing starts to come together. You know, you have the edge data. Maybe that goes right to Pulsar. Now, if I grab some REST data from weather, from Twitter, for some other feeds you have, join them together in Flink via the uh, different Pulsar topics, and then you're in really good shape there. You know, depends what you want to do. NiFi can also send uh, some of that information into, say, a uh, Slack channel. Like here, this was the analysis of me. That gets sent to a Slack channel, makes it easy to uh, take a look at it. You know, lots of options there, whether I'm sending it to a cloud database I'm sending it to uh, any kind of sync. Lots of options on how I do that. I'm looking to see if we have any additional questions. There's been some good chat in there with uh, some different uh, suggestions. If you have any, uh, let's get through this. 
if you have any further questions, you know, you can contact us now through the chat or Q&A or see us later. We have some more uh, talks going on and I'll be doing another NIFI talk tomorrow. If you have questions on NIFI or Pulsar, we can answer it through them. Uh, I seem to have uh, some good amount of Q&A time through, uh, through these talks. If not, just feel free to reach out, whether it's through uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, whatever makes sense for you. I, I hope you've liked uh, this example set of code we've been doing. It's, uh, like I said, it's something you can easily do on your own. You know, it doesn't take too much. If you want that extra assistance, certainly having Stream Native and a cluster configured and stable for you might make things a lot easier. I know, uh, you know, when you're doing it on your own, there's a lot to do. Maybe you just want to write the application and you don't want to have to worry about managing tenants and namespaces and topics. And, you know, how big do I size the cluster? You know, where do I put the storage? Where do I put the tiered storage? Lots of options there that uh, maybe aren't questions that you're ready to answer on your own. You may need help. Stream Native is out there to help you. We are the people behind Apache Pulsar. So if you like Pulsar, if you like what we're doing, please uh, reach out. You know, there's lots of uh, other things going on, like Pulsar Summit. Uh, there may be some time to get uh, a talk into Pulsar Summit Asia. Europe has got some pretty good talks there. I've got one that's expanding on this talk we're doing today. And maybe there'll be some new features with some new releases that may be coming. You know, that's uh, standby. We'll see what happens there. If we don't have any more questions, we're almost out of time. Uh, I don't know if, uh, David, have you seen anything in there? you have any suggestions, maybe? Anything to show before we uh, wrap it up? I think we showed you the... Uh, Go code. We showed you. Uh, I don't know if I showed you all the JSON code there. This one is uh, is uh, Python code. This one, I'm writing the results of that uh, those sensors plus that uh, deep learning to a log file that another program's running. So you could decide where you want to put your interfaces to Pulsar. Go seems to run really fast on the Jetson. So I've been using that to interface with Pulsar. Most of the, Pyth the libraries for the sensors are in Python, so I did it there. Again, mixing those languages as we need to depends on uh, what you're comfortable with. You know, whether you want to do everything in Java you want to do everything in Go. You want to do it in Python. You want to do it in Node.js. <laughs> Good luck there. There's a uh, updated library there that makes that pretty uh, robust. Uh, so it's really up to you what you want to use. And uh, I will wrap it up with my uh, takeaway slide here. So if you need to uh, contact me, please feel free to reach out. This video should be available from ApacheCon in a little bit. If it's not, I'll make sure I post uh, all the slides out there to my speaker profile, as well as to uh, SlideShare. So uh, thanks for uh, coming today. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Or I'll see you around uh, ApacheCon. I'll be around in, in the chat and stuff if you need anything. Thanks for coming.